pandemic hits within the next year and a half, the Federal Reserve increases its balance sheet by over $4 trillion. Congress issues over $5 trillion in, mon- in fiscal stimulus. How did the Fed get this so wrong? How, how did they not think that this was going to unleash well, the inflation it has? The Fed got it wrong because they canceled the quantity theory of money. They've canceled Milton Friedman, in short. And that, why? That's, and, 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 well, this is, this is interesting. Modern post-Keynesian economics, is, that, that is the kind of economics that is taught almost all graduate programs around the world, literally, for the last 30 years. So the trend and dominance in, in the teaching of macroeconomics has is, is changed a lot and, and basically destroyed the equation of exchange and quantity theory of money kind of idea. In other words, for me and for somebody like John Greenwood, my associate, MV equals PY is, is the theory of everything in macroeconomics. That's been kind of intellectually, shall we say, canceled and moved aside. So that's one factor. The other factor and reason that the Fed hasn't been looking at the quantity theory is the composition of staff members at at the Federal Reserve. You've you've got over 450 economists at the Fed in Washington. In the whole system, you you have over 700, I think 785 economists. Now, none of of them got it right. That's that's your question. I mean, these these are the technicians, the technocrats. Why and, and if you look at the composition from a political point of view, at headquarters, the Democrats on the staff outnumber the Republicans 48.5 to 1. 48.5 to 1. So they're essentially all Democrats. Now, if you're a Democrat, who's the economist that really has to be canceled and taken out of the picture. It's Milton Friedman. Enemy number one of of the Democratic Party is Milton Friedman. In fact, in 2020, President Biden actually said, this is a quote, Milton Friedman isn't running the show anymore. Interesting. And for folks that aren't as steeped in economics as you are, can you just explain why apparently his policies are sort of anathema to them? Well, number one, he's a free market economist so, and, and, and an anti-statist. Okay. It, Milton Friedman thinks the optimum, for his thought, uh, unfortunately, he's passed away, he isn't with us anymore, except in, in podcasts and so forth. And, and, and he's, he's very effective and alive and kicking in podcasts, which drive, that they drive the Democrats nuts because he, he's a very clear pedagogue. He's a good teacher, a great economist, of course, Nobel laureate, and and very much a a free market, small government type. He thinks the optimum size of the government should be about 10 to 15 percent of GDP. Well, we're we're like three times larger than that. Right, right. So anybody (laughs) who's big government obviously isn't a fan of him. Right. So it's big governments versus small government, discipline and control of the money supply, balanced budgets, all of these things that obviously don't sit very well with with Democrats. They, They want a bigger government. They have embraced modern monetary theory, which essentially says that you can spend as much as you want, let the central bank finance it, and it's not going to cause inflation. Well, we've seen how well that experiment worked okay. uh, in the last couple of years in the United States. So, so that's you have two things going on. One is that the economic models are not consistent with the equation of exchange. They don't include money. The modern post-Keynesian macroeconomic models do not include money. Well, the equation of exchange and quantity theory of money is, is focused on money is, is the big elephant in the room. So, so that's the theory is different. And then you look at the makeup of the staff and their political in, inclinations. And I think that is significant because they don't like all the things that Milton Friedman stands for, basically. So, and one, one, one big thing he stands for happens to be the quantity theory of money. So if you, if you don't like Friedman, you're canceling Friedman, 
you're canceling a lot of ideas that just don't go down very well with the Democrats. And, and one of those happens to be the quantity theory of money. Got it. So, so it sounds like what you're saying is a big reason the Fed sort of missed the implications of all the money printing is an ideological blindness, right? Sort of, yeah, sort of the analogy yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in my mind as I hear you talk, it's like pilots getting into a plane and saying, you know what, we're just agreeing the altimeter we don't care about, right? We're, <laughs> you know, j just like they're, they're ignoring the quantity of money, the pilots are ignoring something that's critical to actually flying an airplane successfully. And of course, if you do that, it's not likely going to end well for you. Absolutely. I mean, if you if you're if you're a central bank and you don't have money on the altimeter, you're flying blind. Right. And, and if if you don't have that altimeter with money on it, you, you're also if you're trying to control inflation, you're kind of grasping for straws. You don't you don't know exactly what to do. So so that's that's why I say there, there's a high probability they'll make a mistake when they try to control inflation. They, they didn't get it right. They didn't anticipate it. They, they had no idea what, what was going on. And, and now they're hitting the panic button and, and indicating that they want to get inflation under control. And I think they're grasping for straws because they don't have the right theory. They don't have the right model of the whole thing. They don't have the quantity theory of money. And in fact, Chairman Powell, last year, actually in congressional testimony, said we had to unlearn this. We had to unlearn the quantity theory of money and the fact that there's a relationship between the growth and the money supply and, and nominal growth and GDP. And the nominal growth and GDP, of course, contains a real component. That's, that's just why the kind of potential of two or a little over 2%. And the rest of whatever happens to be going on with nominal GDP is inflation. So you've got inflation plus the real component equals nominal GDP. And the equation of exchange is just a model for determining where nominal GDP is going. If you enjoyed this video clip, click here to watch another one you should like.